Hello everyone, welcome to Internal Screening. Today we are reviewing X, the 2022 film from Thai West, which has spawned a whole trilogy of films in its wake, which is quite surprising because this is a throwback slasher film hearkening to the likes of Texas Chainsaw Massacre and sort of the early 70s wave of slasher films that set the trajectory for the genre. Town the Dreaded Sundown. Town the Dreaded Sundown, which we reviewed recently. This film centers around a group of pornographic actors and producers going out into the middle of buttfuck nowhere America to film their latest pornography film. And the goals of the characters kind of one of like seeing pornography as counterculture. They are kind of forging their own path in a world that won't accept them. And there's this kind of sort of righteous, almost punky anger to what they're doing and that flying in the face of convention. And so kind of interestingly brings to life, I guess, a group of people that would otherwise be seen by many as quite sort of unsympathetic because as is the classic trope of horror films, the overly sexual people often die, you know, in your classic slasher films, it's always the uh, quote unquote sluts that die first. You know, the promiscuous people are the ones to go as though being punished for their promiscuity. So having the entire cast be of that ilk is a kind of interesting subversion to a degree of that kind of notion. So yeah, they go out to this remote farmland uh, owned by this sort of creepy old couple, very classic, very tropey. And would you believe things go bump in the night and not all goes well for our team of pornographic pioneers. <laughs> so, uh, Rupert, I'll pass it to you. What did you make of X? I found it to be disappointingly safe and really run of the mill, considering like what you, everything you just said is completely true. Mm. And the film clearly has aspirations to be sort of part of this kind of slightly elevated horror that people talk about these days, where you're taking horror and maybe sort of dissecting it in a sort of meta sense or doing something different with a really classic horror trope and you're right it's sort of very much a retro 70s slasher film repackaged in this sort of new context with this edgy pornography angle mm. but what I found disappointing is that the film spends a lot of time setting up these characters and having some interesting dialogue between them and like creating sort of interesting dynamics but when it actually comes to being a horror film it almost feels like very secondary mm. and once all of that stuff kicks in it, it just quickly becomes like a kind of slightly unsatisfying very run of the mill like straight down the middle oh and that's what happens right and it feels despite its kind of lofty ambitions to be a very kind of unadventurous film which i found quite disappointing because there are good elements to it and it's quite well directed uh, it has some good performances in it it's pretty well written i think crucially it's just it didn't really know what it wanted to do in terms of how to build to a climax and conclusion and it seemed to have more interest in just kind of talking about, in a, in a meta sense, what horror films are than actually being a horror film. Okay. It was just, and on top of that, I feel like most of the problems this film have would just be solved if it was not like almost two hours long. Yeah, I guess it's deceptively long. I hadn't really thought. This is like an hour twenty film. That's what it should That's be. That's what I okay. And it would feel much more fitting, right, as an homage to the nineteen seventies slasher films, which were all you okay. know ludicrously short. Yes. So basically, I just found this film really boring. Okay. Yeah, I'll be honest. I kind of echo what you have to say. What I will say is like the establishment of the characters and kind of their interactions early on before the horror sets in is easily the most interesting aspect of the film because I think everyone in this is pretty well characterized, mm -hmm. which, you know, is not a given by any stretch in horror films or horror as a genre. So that's always welcome. And it does, it sort of looking into and analyzing the desires, the drives of people choosing this lifestyle is not something often touched upon in mm -hmm. film in general. And so that was kind of like an eye opening. Um, yeah, it's a pretty like fresh context. Like, it's not something you've seen before. Yeah, it's not yeah. your standard Motley crew of teenagers in the woods playing spin the ball. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That these people are here to achieve something, even if what they want to achieve is so inherently opposed to the prevailing viewpoint of the world at the time and even arguably of the world of today. So, and I really like particularly our lead 
Mia Goth. I think she does a great job of kind of, she has this sort of airy aloofness to her, very hippie. But she's playing a dual role as well, I should imagine. Yes, that. she is. That's a, that's an. That's kind of the selling point of the film. I should have touched on that. Yeah, well, yeah, that's an interesting point. I, I think I'll come back to how I feel about that. But uh, yeah, she plays both our lead and Pearl, the mm -hmm. old lady, who, spoilers, is the one that goes around mm -hmm. fucking killing everyone. But I kind of, what I really like about her characterization is she's, yeah, she has this aloofness and this kind of, I don't give a fuck attitude, but also this strange kind of like hard nosed punkiness to her where she's like, yeah, but I'm also going to do what the fuck I want. Fuck everyone else. And like, there's this kind of interesting duality to her character. And she's also kind of, not only is she pursuing her aspirations as a pornographic actress, but this is kind of her debut in doing these kinds of things. So she has these really sort of strong convictions about something that she's actually incredibly new to. So mm -hmm. you're kind of discovering it with her, which is kind of a, a useful entry point for us to understand these characters' motivations. Other performances, uh, I think, are pretty strong across the board. I like I, the sleazy director guy. Yes, yeah, sleazy director guy is excellent. He was probably the, my favourite. Like, yeah. He was the most funny and charismatic. Yeah, and the fact that he's married to the blonde, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, and they're like in some kind of There's some kind of relationship, but he's happy to let her be fucked by Kid Cudi. Yeah, another yeah. another odd name on the cast list there. Yeah, I've um, actually found Kid Cudi to be quite sort of disappointing in this film. I'd yeah. probably say of the characterization I found is to be the least interesting. They sort of, I won't spoil it, but they try to characterize him quite late on before something happens. <laughs> and it's like, right, okay, I know why you're doing this now. And then something happens, so it's like, cool. Right. But I guess he's kind of like weirdly objectified in the film because he doesn't really have a lot going on as a character right, for the most part. Yeah, he's just... He's just kind of there he's just to be, like, hot. Cut. So it's like, it's he, I found him kind of boring. And yeah, I, I, I was going to say, yeah, I think of all of the acting in it, maybe it's not so much a problem with his acting as it is the characterization. Yeah, I don't know. Because I don't, I don't think Kid Cudi is a bad actor. I just don't think he was at the same level of which mm. everyone else was. I mean, the real highlight is the old people, right? Um, Like, in terms of... That's what people talked about, about this film. I don't know if I agree. I think I actually found that to be kind of one of the more average and uninteresting aspects. No, no. I mean, I don't mean highlight in terms of quality, but, like, that is probably the most memorable part of the film in terms of, like, the, the imagery it provides. Uh, I suppose with, so, yeah. In, like, in a horror sense. I yeah, guess. with Pearl kind of... Pearl's an interesting character because she doesn't really get much in the way of dialogue to articulate herself. She instead just kind of wanders into scenes, says something cryptic, mm. and there's this kind of unspoken bond between her and Mia Goth's character, which is obviously, you know, implicit, but also explicit in the fact that they're literally played by the same actress. And and to that level, it is also kind of beating you around the head with it a yes, little bit. Yes, yes. And it, it, which is frustrating <clears throat> because you could have articulated the same point with two different actors and it would have been less. Yeah. Um, uh, it's not particularly I, I, noticeable though. Like you wouldn't know it was the same actress. I, I, well, what I did notice was the makeup. Because even if I did, I, I didn't- She looks almost like a zombie. I didn't 100% know it was Mia Goth. But as soon as I saw, oh, that's clearly a young person in old people makeup, I thought, why would they do that? Oh, it's played by one of the other right, actors. Yeah, yeah. And it had to be her. So it all kind of fell into place. The moment I saw her, I was like, well, I think it's a bit patronizing in a straight, mm -hmm. in, in, in a roundabout way, because on some levels, it feels like a, an attempt to, yeah, convey this sort of like deep connection or pseudo deep connection between two characters. But on another level, it's incredibly facile, you know, just spoon feeding the audience a connection that the otherwise could have been found out in another way. I just didn't find the old people's uh, motivation to be particularly interesting or compelling either because it kind of seems like her motivation is this kind of like repression that she yes, has. Yes, yes. And the old guy's motivation is his like impotence, which is kind of like a funny duality. But it just, because they're sort of so cartoonish, it's hard to feel particularly inspired or interested in their motivations. Mm. And then when things do kick off because of those motivations, Motivations. It just kind of feels like a dull inevitability rather than like yeah. lots of things coming together or, you know, like a specific interaction, you know, something building on itself. It's like you can kind of see exactly where the film's going and then it goes there and then the film's over. Yeah, I don't feel like it, there, there's uh, the film does a good enough job of providing that connective tissue between 
what you expect to happen, and and then what what does, but actually what finding, does happen is but like, so dull. Yeah, but but finding like the reasoning for those characters going in those directions, like we have the character motivations in so much as like a template, but in terms of like storyboarded ideas, there's not really a point at which you go, ah, I understand now why this character has gone from this place being a repressed old lady to a murderous repressed old lady. Mm. Like, I, there's, in my mind, not anything sort of compelling or convincing between those two points. Well, I feel like the film basically has two main creative options is the kind of film that it is, is like a sort of modern take on an old genre. In my mind, the two options are basically you sort of do like a symbolic horror film where you have characters who are sort of more metaphorical, and they kind of represent things that you're trying to communicate. Okay. And then what happens in the film is like a communication of your idea. So a lot of it's sort of very meta and the characters aren't really characters, they're kind of like symbols of yes. things, right? Which is what this film is. Or you do the other thing where you do sort of like a goofy, silly, fun, evil dead type okay. slasher comedy thing. Or you just do something really over the top. That yeah, gets, yeah, something, yeah. It just gets ridiculously violent or really scary. And the film is obviously going for the first thing. And the first thing is just very hard to pull off. You ha it has to be a really good horror film. The, the horror film I can think of that best did this is Suspiria, the remake of Suspiria. Oh, okay, right. Where the film, a lot of the characters are sort of very symbolic and the film does go to this ridiculous metaphor Oracle conclusion where it just goes insane and it's very satisfying because of that mm. but the film ultimately like doesn't really have a whole lot of like horror scenes in it it's actually sort of very limited but it really kind of earns that those final moments and those like wonderful kind of horror bits that you have particularly towards the end whereas this film like i said it just kind of goes along and then it's over and you're just like if you're going for the symbolic metaphorical thing I, it just wasn't very affecting yeah, talking about Suspiria briefly as well, mm. uh, another film in which uh, one actor plays multiple roles through the use of yes, lots of, true. Uh, yeah. uh, of prosthetics. Um, yeah, I forgot. I didn't even think of that, but yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Tilda Swinton. And, and that does it in a much more subtle way. For a start, I think the prosthetics are better. So there is a kind of an element to which the actor is lost in the character. Mm. So Plus it's the, Tilda Swinton, so you get extra points. Oh, true. And she's <laughs> absolutely fantastic. But the kind of the obviousness of the con connection to those characters isn't so blatant and ham-fisted and, and, and I guess there isn't such because I think there's like three characters Just three, yeah. there isn't such an obvious kind of connection there whereas Mia Goth's character and Pearl it's like ah they represent two sides of the same coin but I feel like together. the film doesn't even really explore it that much do you know no. what I mean well that's the biggest issue with it because once you kind of have your kind of set up drama and, and sort of uh, character interactions with all of our pornographic actors uh, I like, kind of like some of the stuff where one of the assistants, a sort of teenage girl, then decides that she wants to join in mm. and much to the horror of her boyfriend or her partner. Well, were they actually boyfriend and girlfriend? Because I couldn't quite figure Yeah, I'm not, I, I can't quite remember. Because I know that he was like sort of, because you have the, the boyfriend or the, whoever he is, he's like the cinematographer, he's like mm. very like, oh, I'm, this is art. Yes. Because that was like kind of interesting. Uh, but that's sort of where the film takes a turn yes because it's like after that where it's like remembers it has to be a horror film right yeah yeah yeah. so you kind of have that moment and then nothing really comes yeah that's it, it. it feels like two two halves of two films sellotape together in the middle mm. and what we're missing is this kind of crucial detail crucial plot points there for those two things to mesh in a neat way mm. and or just something compelling yeah yeah and, yeah. and like you say once you do get to the horror elements, it, it becomes very by the numbers kind of yeah. kills. There's very little in the way of creativity with the kills. I quite like one, which is like the pitchfork through, like there's, it's quite like a nice bit of cinematography. I mean, the film um, is just generally it, very well made. It, it does look yeah. nice, yeah. yes. Uh, I, I, I remember there's some like cool bits of lighting where she kills the nerdy cinematographer guy out by the car and then she's kind of like bathed in like the, the light from the car, bathed in red. It also just lacks intensity. I just don't think, uh, like, well, one of the best things about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is that last 30 minutes of the film is just like raw intensity. And mm. I'm not saying you necessarily have to do that, 
but I feel like for a good slash film, say like Halloween, for example, there are like moments of like serious, like intensity. And this film just feels, it's hard for me to say, because it's like, like I said, it's it's well made and it's mostly well acted, but it just really fails to really pick up much momentum, even yeah, no, with I some agree. of the violence here, which is like, some of it's all right. Like, like you said, there's some- well, I guess there's the little, crocodile bit. That's kind of interesting. I mean, again, I just felt like, that's the kind of thing that should be really cool, right? Yeah. Or like but interesting, it just, but- it's, it's strange, yeah. Someone gets killed by a crocodile. I should love that. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, it didn't kind of do anything for me. Yeah, so... The way they presented it. As far as I can tell, a lot of people love this film. A lot of people are really impressed. Yeah. And have really gelled with this film. And it's a shame because, you know, I came in with that yeah, hope same. and expectation yeah. of, of trying to find that same connection with it. And while I see plenty of things to appreciate about this film, make no mistake, I don't, I don't think it sticks to landing. I don't think that the horror aspect of this horror film is particularly compelling. It's, mm. It makes for a far more interesting character study of people entering the porn industry than mm. it makes for a slasher of those people. So, Rupert, what would you rate it? A, a five out of 10, I think it's average. The more I think about it, it, it feels emptier uh, yeah. in, in what it's offering. Like There are interesting elements here, but I hate using this word, but I think it is a little pretentious. No, I, I agree. Because, I and that, like again, Suspiria was a film accused of being pretentious by many because it's sort of quite ridiculous at points. Right. But I would argue very much against that being called pretentious. I think this is an example of a film that genuinely is pretentious. At least Suspiria had like some real flair to it, right? Mm. And really delivered. And plus I think it was like a very like thematically solid film. This is an example of a film that is trying to be really thematically interesting and have kind of these like symbolic characters that just flops really hard when it comes to actually saying something. I just- Other, yeah. than, other than the obvious kind of surface level things yeah, that sure. are already detailed in characters yeah. like oh this character is repressed this character is freeing herself from yeah. this repression you and know. in a way in a way despite the fact it's sort of trying to go against tropes and subvert tropes it kind of actually feels quite tropey by the yeah. way uh, by the standard of a modern horror film because most modern horror films have some kind of meta element to them. Yes. Like, I would take Cabin in the Woods over this any day Ooh, of the week. Yeah, so 100%. When yeah. you're coming to meta horror films, I think you can do a lot better than this, to be honest. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I'm with you. Five out of 10. Um, and I echo all of your grievances. I, what, one thing I would say is I am interested in no, the, sequel. the sequels. because we Slash prequel. So there's, yes, the prequel, which is Pearl. And I can't remember the name of the third film, which it's not is out yet, so. yet to come out. But I'm intrigued because I wonder, I mean, it won't necessarily make this film better, but it would still be interesting because there are obviously points of interest as we've said with this film and perhaps in colouring the character of Pearl a little more could at least retroactively make me more interested in this film mm. not necessarily improve the quality of the film but yeah there are interesting things set out here and perhaps Ty West does a better job of conveying those things in the next film. So yeah, it's a shame. We both really wanted to enjoy this film and we apologize to anyone who has watched this review and is seething in anger that we didn't. But that has been our review of X. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, if you dislike this video, give it a dislike and remember to hit confirm when you hit unsubscribe. We will be back with more Hooptober horror content and also plenty of reactions and more good shit on the horizon after that. We will catch you again in the next one. Peace. Peace.